Hey, Joe and Big Al. This is TJ from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I drive a 2009 Honda Accord with 275,000 miles on it. I'm going to drive that sucker into the ground. My drink of choice is either a Dr. Pepper or a Diplomatico rum. I'm looking for some spitball advice. I've got about 1.1 million in stock market exposure and about a million in real estate equity, and I'm 37. 50% of my expenses are covered by my passive income from real estate. My question is about asset allocation. So I've got some super fortunate, well, unfortunate things that are going to happen, but I've got some windfalls coming my way from life insurance payouts and then an inherited IRA from older family members. And that's to the tune of about another 1.5 million. I'm planning on retiring from my W-2 in two years to prioritize being a good dad and spending time with my kids before I get too old and I've always heard about bond allocation and and having that be the conservative part of your portfolio. But in my situation with this upcoming windfall, I'm trying to figure out how I should plan my asset allocation today, knowing that in about 15 years, I'll get a significant chunk of money in addition to what I already have. So just looking for you guys to spitball advice. I I looked around, can't find good answers on this. So hoping you can help. Uh, Love the show always goes to the top of my list whenever it comes out. You make me laugh. You add a ton of value. Uh, appreciate you guys a lot. Hope you're doing well and have a great day. TJ, my man from Minnesota. Minnesota is right. You guys are, you could bond, right? Well, yeah, over some Diplomatico. <laughs> Diplomatico rum. Okay, congrats, TJ. 37 years old. of his living expenses are covered by the passive income from his real estate empire. He's got $1.1 million sitting in equities. And he's curious. He wants to get rid of the W-2 job in two years. And, um, but the, the, the question I guess that I have for TJ is how much money is he spending? And what needs to come from the portfolio of anything? Because he's 37, right? The allocation should be based on what the money needs to do. So at 37 or 40 years old, if it still doesn't need to produce any type of income for you to live off of, well, then keep it in equities. But if you need to start drawing income from the portfolio, then that's a totally different story. Then you need to tone down the overall you know, exposure to risk to make sure that he has some cushion or some safety there to, to, to create income from. Yeah, and and we like to tell people to have at least five years, if not more, in safe assets like bonds. So even if the market goes down for a longer period of time, you can sell bonds. You can have money that's that's not going to go down very much. Hopefully, will go up a little bit. So it's it's your your allocation should be goals based, Joe. Just like you said, Uh, the the second thing I would say is I don't think it's ever a good idea to do planning based upon a inheritance because you just you never know right i i think it's best to be planning on your own situation and then if the inheritance comes through then i think then obviously you can adjust the plan that that's 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 kind of i think that's a more prudent way because maybe whoever you're going to inherit this from ends up spending it maybe they have a 10 years in a long-term care facility where they need to use this money or or whatever so the other windfall that that 1.5 million that's coming tj's way um, is that coming now or is that coming in like 15 years from now? Looks yeah. like it's in 15 years. F- 15 years. And th- th- there's too much uncertainty, right? So yeah, I don't think you... <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to blow out of this studio right now because <laughs> I think I'm going to get some cash in like That's right. 25 years from now. Right. <laughs> Hopefully some old family members kick off, but if, if they don't, I'm going to make sure that that happens. Um, yeah, TJ. I, I thought he was going to get another one and a half million dollars, like right now. And I don't and so think he's so. going to have two and a half million bucks or two point three million, and it's like, okay, now I got two point three. What do I do here? Um, but l- l- let's say he wants to spend. You know, he if he only has the one point one right now, he doesn't want to. You can't spend any more than probably twenty five, thirty thousand dollars from that portfolio, right? And so let's just say it's $30,000 and maybe you want to go out 10 years. So that would be $300,000 of the 1.1 is probably what you want to keep in bonds. If that's what the spending need is. 
right? Because then that's a 10 year cushion. So if the markets are doing well, then you can feed up dividends and capital gains and so on. If the market plummets like it is now, well, then you just peel off some bonds to get you your 30,000 of income. So TJ's living expenses are 60 grand, 30,000 is coming from real estate. He needs another 30,000 from the 1.1. This is all hypothetical, TJ. I have no idea what you're spending. But if that were the case, then you take 30,000, depending on your, your, your comfort level now. Now it's like your risk tolerance. So maybe you go five years. So that's 150,000 in, in cash and bonds. I'd probably go 10 years. So that's 300,000. So it's like, you know, you're still at a 70, 30, you know, portfolio um, balance, 70% stocks, 30% fixed income. Um, which is still pretty aggressive at 40 years old when you're going to stop your W-2 or, or, or 39. You know, I think you, that's where you still need to be uh, because, A, 15 years, you're going to get another 1.5 and bada boom, bada bang, you're Maybe. good. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make an educated guess because he's got a million dollars of real estate equity. Let's say it's in Minneapolis. Let's say it's a 5% cap rate. Maybe it's more, but let's be conservative. 5% cap rate, so $50,000. So maybe he needs 100. So that's just a guess. And if you need 100, you don't have enough assets to do this at your age. So maybe you got to work part time. So, but if we, his wife we, is working, maybe, you know, maybe that maybe. covers it. Maybe the portfolio doesn't necessarily need to cover any of his income yeah. needs. Yeah, that's so right. Guess, True. The, the point of, I think, the, the discussion is when anyone is trying to figure out what asset allocation they should have in their portfolio, it needs to be based. Well, what is the money for? What are you trying to accomplish with the money? Our last, the geriatric anonymous guy, right? He could, he should be a hundred percent in cash and he's 85 years old because it's not for him. It's for his daughters that are 30. Right. And it's, so it's like, well, he, but with TJ, who's 37, he might need a lot more fixed income because we don't really understand the full picture. So it's what is the money for? So it's always starting, okay, well, in, in two years or three years from now, he needs to start creating income. Well, now he needs to position that portfolio today to make sure in three years that he's set up appropriately. Are you prepared for retirement? Schedule a free financial assessment with an experienced financial professional right online at purefinancial.com.